slack based models um, the models that uh, we have seen so far are eyes um, input oriented or um, output oriented in the sense that only we, we only change the inputs or, or the outputs or we so we only increase um, increase the outputs or decrease the input um, but there are also situations that you want to um, change the um, the inputs and the outputs at the same time it says you want to decrease the inputs and also you want to um, increase the the output so um, there is a model called the the additive model uh, which is based upon the input and the output slacks. You don't see a, an efficient scores in this case. Um, so this this is the, the the mathematical model, okay, mathematical model. So you don't see a theta, okay, uh, in in this model. All you see is this. Uh, you try to maximize the sum of the slacks. Uh, if you have um, m inputs, you can have m slacks. Uh, input slacks. If you have s output, you have s um, output slacks. And these two are the constraints. So in this model, um, the decision variables or the changing cells in Excel in the solver uh, would be the the lambdas. Uh, depends how many DM you have, you can uh, you you can end up uh, you know how many uh, lambdas, and the the input and output slacks. So this is called the um, the additive model. Um, let's say um, you have two inputs, input one and input two. Again, um, in the the original input oriented DE model, you're going to reduce the D, the, the, the inputs of the D uh, proportionally um, to to this point on the frontier. Uh, f if you have a slack based model or the additive model, uh, what you do, you're going to uh, reduce uh, the X2 by this amount and then you're going to reduce uh, the X1 by that amount. So this this is the slack. This is what we call the slack. Okay. Uh, the, the two input stacks. So you actually try to uh, maximize the uh, the two slacks, okay? And this is how you end up um, to the frontier. So you get a di again, you get a different um, projection point on the frontier if you compare the additive model to uh, the regular input oriented uh, CIS model, for example. And now, if you have one input, one output, okay. Um, let's look at this. You have a, you know, b. That's the frontier, okay. And, and so this is a uh, actual variable in terms of scale uh, frontier, VRS frontier. And if you look at this g, if you have input oriented model, you you basically reduce the input all the way to a in the frontier. Or uh, if you're using an output oriented model, you um, increase the the output all the way to be on the frontier, so uh, we get that. That's the the benchmark on the frontier, and A is the benchmark on the frontier for the input-oriented model. Now, if you use the additive model, uh, what you do, you're gonna you're gonna increase the output a little bit, and then you're gonna reduce the input uh, a little bit, and you end up a point say um, on the frontier here. Okay. Now, depending on the um, the specific um, Examples or cases you work on. I mean, you're not necessarily say you're going to increase the output by this amount. It depends on the uh, particular situation. So, uh, this picture basically shows the difference between the additive model and the input-oriented model and the output-oriented model. And this is how the additive model works. And sometimes you want to introduce weight. It's a sort of uh, like preference. Um, into those slacks, so uh, you w I would add a W I and W R. These are for the weights. Those are weights that you just specify. In a sense, you specify those weights uh, before you uh, run the model. I mean, it's it's it's, it's the same um, concept. I mean, uh, same model. The um, the only difference is, is that you you put a weight onto the model. Now, what this this means is, let me go back to that picture again. Uh, let's say you know this is road that you go without the weights you know so um, in this case you can see you you, you see a large amount of uh, input is being reduced now if you put a a 
bigger weight on the output in this case uh, you may see a situation like I go all the way up to this point and then I make a turn and reduce the input so um, the weight here actually um, and to some extent okay, um, changes the um, the projection point on the frontier changes the projection point, point on the frontier um, Because if this, uh, let me go go to that this model again. Um, this is you try to maximize the the, the the sum of slacks. If you have a if, if you place a bigger weight on a particular slack, um, what you want is you want that slack to be bigger. Okay, so that's the meaning of the weight. If you you know that, that slack to be bigger because this weight is big, and if the slack is big, you get a bigger. Um, Value on, on this, this, on this, this function, on this function. So, uh, for example, if you think that you want to reduce more of the uh, the input one than input two, you would place a bigger weight on the input one slack than than the input two slack. Um, this paper is, is about an application of weighted uh, slack based model or weighted additive model. Um, I, I made a couple of slides on that, but um, I think you should read that article and even try to learn the data set that, that I post on my WPI. Um, in that way, you can get a, a good um, understanding of the, um, the weighted uh, additive model and how. Um, these weights are determined and how um, these models can be applied. Again, this is only a CRS model because you, you don't have a constraint on some of the lambda j's. If you add a constraint on the sum of the lambda j's and then you get a, uh, a different, um, different slack based model. For example, if you add the sum of the lambda j is equal to 1, then you get a weight um, VIS slack based model.